In this video, I want to give another little showcase as to what you can expect from videos, what was it, like 13 last time, all the way up to 26, where we started doing a lot of focus on the actual weapon sway, as well as a couple other features like reloading. So currently, for example, uh, starting off with reloading, I press R while aiming, we play our reload animation, and it does not move with the animation. So if I were to change this over, we have, where is it? We have this guy right here. If I were to bump this alpha up to like 0 0.5, we can start to get some of the rotation with the animation. So if I reload now, as you can see, it starts rotating the gun a little bit with the animation. And if I bump this all the way up to 1, which you can see the rotation of the normal animation right here, it rotates a good bit. We get this result where it rotates and plays the entire animation. So this is something that should be driven whenever we go to actually play the animation. That will probably be done later down the road. But on top of that, we now have weapon sway. So if I look left, I look right, the weapon tracks kind of with it. So kind of escape from Tarkov style. So as you go left, the weapon points a little bit left. Same thing as you could turn right, points right. You look up, goes up, down, goes down, and all that kind of stuff. And same thing applies when you are aiming. So this is all done procedurally. So it's done on tick for the event graph and only for your client. It does not happen for other clients and it works with whatever optic you are using. So it all works the same and it's applying to the rotation and the location of your weapon. On top of that, we now have some basic, even though I did a terrible job with the actual graph, but you can see we have some basic weapon sway. So this right here is done procedurally as well. So and as we walk, as you can see, it increases. So based upon our speed, that dictates how much and how fast, well, mostly just how much actually the weapon sway moves. So if I start walking very slowly by walking along this wall, as you can see, it is very little. And when I walk full speed, it goes up to the normal amount. And again, that translates everywhere no matter which optic you are on. And as you slow down again, you're right back to the normal sway. So that's all code driven by, let's see, which function would that even be? That was our move vector curve. I need to rename this to something that makes a little bit more sense, just like this function here needs to be renamed. But that all is what controls it. So we now have a pretty feature complete system that is completely dynamic for your aiming, dictated by how fast you rotate, how fast you, and just everything. So the same thing goes with our rotation. It is also clamped. So if I rotate really fast, as you can see, it does have a max point. You have to go obviously really, really fast to hit that max point, but it is there. So it's to prevent you from going and looking pretty much completely at the side of the gun, which obviously is a bit excessive. So we got a good bit of stuff going on. And same thing goes, for the most part, everything that needs to be is event-driven. One improvement, I don't really know if it would be considered much of an improvement, because it would still be doing that test every time, but where we uh, dictate all of this kind of stuff, I kind of want to do a check here and see if we are actually rotating in order to do a comparison. So we may end up doing that here in the next video or two, but I'm not too worried about it. Our event graph is empty besides from one animation notifier, which is just for testing purposes. And our event graph is look or our animation graph is looking pretty clean. So I'm not entirely sure what else to really do for this series, because I think we are just about done, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave that as a maybe because I don't know if there's anything else I'm gonna add. So if you have any ideas or anything like that, feel free to leave me some suggestions and I'll try to incorporate them. So I'll leave it here. And a quick note, if you want to get access to the remaining videos, currently all the videos that are going to be on, published on YouTube publicly have been published, so all five of the series. There will also be the remaining portions of the videos, which would be from part six to part 26. Those will be Patreon only for 15 to 30 days after the release of this video's date. So if you want to get access to those, it'll only cost you 
a dollar or if you want to feel more generous you can donate more and if you donate to the ten dollar tier you also get permanent access to my team deathmatch series which has a total of 90 something roughly 90 ish videos again if you have any questions or anything like that regarding this system or something else related to unreal engine feel free to join my discord that's linked down below as well and i'll try to help you out with it so i hope you enjoy